The Infinix Note 40, not the Pro, is a really feature-packed smartphone for about $200 or 327,900 Naira. You get reverse wireless charging to charge other devices, an AMOLED display that refreshes at 120 hertz. There's great performance for the price. It's actually stylish, but there's a catch I should let you know at the end of this video. I know you want to find out, and so, without taking much of your time, Yo guys, let's get started. First off, I usually will start with the box and mine came in a package that's quite interesting and will be sent out to the first buyers of this device. I cover that in the shorts on this channel. But to the smartphone's box itself, you get a wireless charger out of this tiny box and on opening the main box, you see a SIM ejector, the usual user manual, a pair of earpiece with this time a USB-C connector because this smartphone doesn't have a headphone jack. No 3.5 millimeter jack. You get a type A to C connector, a whopping 45 watt charger, a really stylish plastic case that turns this phone into a MagSafe compatible device. And also, Infinix was gracious enough to throw on a screen protector. Honestly, that's a lot for the price. Talk about value for money. So design and build quality here. First off, the Note 40 isn't giving you a polarizing design. This is a compact and stylish looking smartphone. You can notice that it has flat sides and these sides make the Note 40 look boxy. You also get rounded corners that won't jab, stab or dig into your hands. This is a sweet design story. I actually don't know how to clearly explain this, but despite being made out of kind of matte plastic at the back here, this smartphone actually feels like one that can slip off the hand, maybe because of the aspect ratio and the material the size I'm made of. The good thing about this is the fact that it comes out of the box with this nice looking plastic case that can mitigate that. Now the rear of this device looks clean with the camera module being the major thing that stands out and covers about a third of this back area. There's what looks like a triple camera setup which I'm not totally sure about and we'll talk more about that later in this video. One design choice I realized I found interesting is the ring lights like flashlight. That's a lot. The ring lights like flash with four LEDs that almost blinds you and this would definitely aid in nighttime photos. Now as expected, the Note 40 comes with a dual SIM slot with no form of memory expansion slot here so you don't have a micro SD card slot on the smartphone. The dual SIM slot is found at the bottom side of the smartphone and there's also this half of the stereo speaker configuration with the other found at the top side of this device. Now. This is a welcome development if you ask me. And as far as the build quality here, you get this IP54 water and dust resistance for the Infinix Note 40. The speakers on this smartphone is tuned by JBL. While I compared the sound coming of this device with my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, I could tell the difference obviously, but this device had a worthy fight. The speakers are loud and clear at the max volume and also a pair that you would enjoy. I also did notice that you won't be able to easily block off the sound coming off this device even when you try to close off the speaker grills from the top and the bottom. And that's because the sound comes off this earpiece thing or the earpiece grill on this device. Now as with other smartphones or Android devices, you get the regular pattern, pin unlock, the face unlock. But the not so conventional aspect about the biometrics and security on this device is the fact that we have this in-display fingerprint scanner. It's nice, gets the job done, but you have to take note that on the Infinix Note 40 here, your finger has to rest a little longer on this fingerprint scanner for you to register that unlock. This is longer than what you get from the physical side or rear-mounted fingerprint scanners. Also, when compared to say the S24 Ultra or other flagship devices, this is actually kind of slow. Another issue for me would be the implementation or positioning of this fingerprint scanner on this display. I always think scanners should be placed a little higher on the screen for easy accessibility because it's always difficult trying to stretch down to the bottom of the screen to unlock your smartphone with this positioning here. So an in-display fingerprint scanner is on here. Now let's talk about the display. The display on the Infinix Note 40 is an AMOLED panel that gets as bright as 1300 nits, making it a device you can easily use outdoors. Now for the screen size here, you get an almost 6.8 inch size display. This is 6.78 inches, which is plenty big for your entertainment. Refresh rate goes up to 120 Hz and can be set to 60, 120 or auto switch, which is my preferred settings because it switches between 60 and 120 Hz. So when you talk about resolutions here, the smartphone, the Note 40 comes with 1080 by 2436 resolution, which is full HD plus. But when it comes to video playback on YouTube, you can see a quad HD playback, which is 2K with the smartphone and this is a welcome development. So far, this display has good colors, nice refresh rates, really bright outdoor smartphone, quite big, it is AMOLED and even has Gorilla Glass protection for this front here. 
There isn't quite a lot to complain about this except I want to be, you know, nitpicky. And let's go there. While the bezels are impressively thin for the price, they are not even. You get about the same thickness from the top and the sides here, but when it comes to the chain, you get a slightly thicker, fatter chain, which can be jarring for some people. That's all I can complain about so far concerning this display. I also love the fact that there's a cutout notch for the front facing camera and not the dewdrop type of notch you get from budget devices. I can say that the display is on point for this one. Now, when it comes to performance, this isn't something we haven't seen in 2024. We have the Helio G99 Ultimate, which is a slightly amped up version of the G99 from MediaTek. Performance has been nothing but excellent. And that's of course expected with this chipset. I was able to smoothly play the titles I love without much worries on the Note 40. My unit here comes out of the box with 8 gigs of RAM, which is also expandable using the memory fusion feature up to 16 gigs here. I also have 256 gigs of internal storage, which is UFS 2.2, but this isn't the type of memory you can expand because there's no memory expansion slot on this one. You're stuck with what you get when you buy this smartphone. Multitasking on this device has actually been smooth. And one thing I can say is the performance is as expected. Excellent for the price and it gets the job done. By the way, here are benchmark scores for the Infinix Note 40, Antutu, Geekbench, and also 3D Mark. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you're loving this video so far, a like and sub will really be appreciated. Thank you. Out of the box, you get XOS 14, which is Infinix's skin on top of Android 14. Does it have its unique style? Of course it does. A lot of people actually do like the skin. In fact, this Android skin has a lot going on, such as peak proof, which is designed to obscure your phone's display so other people have a hard time snooping around your shoulder when you chat or use your phone in public. There's also anti-theft and the list goes on. But one downside is the amount of bloatware you find pre-installed on this device. I understand to make back the money subsidized for bringing this Note 40 to this price point, decisions like this have to be made, but I don't know. Where would you stand? Do you want a more expensive smartphone as a consumer or a smartphone that's cheap but has a lot of ads and bloatware apps installed on it? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. With Android 14 on this smartphone, Infinix plans to upgrade this device up to Android 16, and this should mean that users can expect a seamless and reliable XOS system for an extended period, guaranteeing the longevity of their devices. Well, fingers crossed, they deliver on this promise as that is one of the major reasons I usually would get a smartphone. I wanna be able to have trust and faith in the manufacturer that my device will be up to date with the latest smartphone trends and OS. So at the back, you see what looks like a triple camera setup with a ring light. The main camera has this biggest megapixel count, which is 108 megapixels, and you should be able to capture very detailed photos with this one, especially when in the 108 megapixel mode. I'm assuming the other lenses here might aid with depth sensing, although I didn't get any warning when I tried blocking them off in portrait mode. Also, the third camera, I'm not really sure what it does since there isn't an ultra wide mode or optical zoom mode on the smartphone. The 3x zoom you see, from the camera app is a digital zoom, and I can tell you from the resolution on these photos that it's the same lens that took these photos. Also, from the details you can tell. As far as the quality of shots, these are quite nice for the price. One thing you'll keep getting with this smartphone is really saturated photos or shots, and other things you notice is how good these photos are when you introduce good lighting. It has some cool features like bright flash for dark places, a mode for capturing scenes with different light levels. There is also a super night mode to help you with your night shots, introducing artificial lighting to your camera. Also, there is this AI feature when in portrait mode that can basically help you take shots that are manipulated by AI. You can slim down the head, slim body, plumb the butt. Yeah, that's there. Slim the legs, lengthen them, and so on. These are crazy stuff. For the front facing camera, there's a 32 megapixel sensor, which pleasantly surprised me. Now with good lighting, you get good details. Not a lot of smoothening is going on as I expected before testing this phone. And that's a good thing. You also have this AI makeup feature baked in when you need it. The photos from the smartphone are good when you have good conditions. Videos on the other hand can be recorded up to 2K in resolution for both the front and the rear cameras. And these are better than 1080p for details, but not the best when it comes to stabilized shots. You only get this stabilization thing, the ultra steady mode, when you record in 1080p on the smartphone. So you just have to know that. The camera system is quite good for what this device is. When it comes to battery life, this smartphone holds up to 5,000 mAh of power. This means you can use your smartphone for a very long time, even into the next day, without actually needing to charge this device. On an average use, you're getting over a day of use and running out of power isn't something you're going to be concerned about. One of the best things about the Note 40 is how quickly it charges. There's a support for fast charging up to 45 watts. And by the way, you have a 45 watt charger out of the box. And this is really handy when you need to quickly juice up this device when in a hurry. 
The charging story doesn't end there. You get wireless charging and this isn't the proprietary type you got from the Note 30 from last year. This is real wireless charging built into this phone. Also, the Infinix Note 40 doesn't just use the chargers that come out of the box. You can use other wireless chargers and they'll work fine with the smartphone. This smartphone also comes with a wireless charger about 60 millimeters in diameter, a really small form factor which you can use to travel, you know, you know toss this in your bag and travel. And also, did I mention you have a Bluetooth speaker which also has a wireless charging pad here and you get this when you're among the first people to purchase this device right now. Now back to the small charger here, when you attach this case that comes out of the box to your phone, this turns your smartphone into a MagSafe compatible device and this wireless charger sticks on this device. And this means this device won't easily slide off when charging it. This is convenience. A pleasant surprise for me is the fact that you can easily share your battery power with other devices wirelessly. This means you can use your phone as a power bank to charge up other devices or gadgets. Like a friend's phone or wireless earbuds, it's a handy feature to have when you need to charge something else but don't have a separate power bank and that thing supports wireless charging. Overall, the battery life is impressive, it holds a lot of power, charges quickly both with wires and wirelessly, and you can even charge other devices with the Note 40. Whether you use your phone a lot or just want something convenient, the battery here won't let you down. So for the price of 327,900 Naira or $200, I can't really fault this one, especially considering the accessories you get with this device, the battery system, the good display, quite impressive performance, and again, at this price point. My only gripe or catch I would have with this device would be if the support for two years of updates as promised by Infinix isn't met. That would only further weaken people's trust for the brand. But if they keep true to this promise, this is actually one hell of an impressive buy for Infinix lovers I do recommend. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below before you check out my review of a similarly priced device here. Kawida Day.